Hello everyone. This episode is about the application layer protocol HTTP and its various versions of the HTTP. What is HTTP? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is an application layer protocol for transmitting hypermedia documents such as HTML. So whenever we try to retrieve or send data from one computer to the other computer, that is from a client to the server or from the server to the client, you do exchange the information. So basically, when you are trying to exchange information such as hypermedia documents, where a document contains hypertext, where the text is related to a link to an another document or a text which is indicating some multimedia data, such type of documents, we usually call it as hypermedia documents. So whenever we try to retrieve information from the client to the server or from the server to the client or vice versa, basically we try to exchange the information of those hypermedia documents with the help of the protocol HTTP. In the initial stages, uh, HTTP is designed for communication between the web browsers and the web servers. So usually the web browsers will be present on the client side where the user initiates the requested information and that request is being sent to the server and the web server responses to the request made by the client in giving the web documents, which are basically the hypermedia documents. But in today's technology, we use HTTP for various other purposes, such as distributed collaborative hypermedia information systems, where multiple transactions do happen over the web technologies. So let us see how the HTTP is getting used or HTTP is getting functioned for various purposes. So let us start with a, a simple example where a client issues a request or initiates the request and the request usually contains uh, uh, some basic information such as uh, what is the method that is being asked from the client and what is that header which contains some clients information such as the user and the passwords and other set of details which are pertaining to the user and followed by the carriage return and the line feeder with some MIME information that has been uh, put forward from the client to the server and once the request has been indicated at the server the server gives its corresponding response whether the request is been in a success or the request is not been able to be served by the respective server so the response either it can be a success or a failure and if it is a success the response comes with certain information the response too has got certain uh, important information which you need to keep track of this so what is the status line the status line usually indicates whether it is a successful in responding to the request made by the client or some information is not available or it is not processed or it is available on a, some other system. So along with the status line, you usually also see the header with some MIME document information that is been given to you, the requested client. So this, please make a note that HTTP is a stateless protocol and the server did not maintain any state from the requested to the another. It means that once a request has been made from the client to the server, that's it. The request has been now not been stored on the server or the request is not going to be maintained further. So a new request has to come again from the client. So this is basically an HTTP is a stateless protocol. It does not maintain the states of the requests that are being made by the client. Now let us see with a specific example how this client server communication is happening between uh, these two entities that is the client and the server with the help of http protocol so the client initiates the request the request will be with a method with uh, uh, whatever the information that is requested from the server so here the client is requesting for getting the web document index.html and he is using a protocol HTTP 1.1. And this particular information is present on a server info.fundp.ac.be. It is located on a particular machine. So once the request has been received by the server, 
if the uh, request information that is index.html is available on this server, it responds. It gives us the response. So you see that response is also having some additional information. So the response is given from the server to the client with the protocol mentioning that it is also using HTTP 1.1 and the status line, the status code, which is indicating here is 200. And when it is a 200, it means whatever the request information made by the client is available at the server. And that particular information is passed on back to the client. That's why the status code here is 200. Okay. And when that information has been retrieved and that information, which has been requested from the client who has served that particular information, basically the web server and what is the version of the web server and the flavor. And when that then was the document has been modified and how much is the length of that particular document and what is the content type on that particular document. It contains some normal text as well as some hypertext documents followed by the actual encoded form of the hypertext documents. So this is the response which you usually get back from the server to the client once it has been request has been made. So now let us understand what are the various other methods apart from the get method, the HTTP is supporting us. So basically uh, HTTP methods, uh, if you try to understand, we start with uh, four different methods. One method is called as a get, the other method is called as a post, and the third one is called as a put, and the fourth one is called as a delete. Of course, there are other various methods too. But uh, uh, a beginner has to first understand about these four sets of methods. If you remember our crude operations, one of the software engineering principle, which states that uh, whenever some requests have been made between two entities, that is uh, the client and the server, those operations can be related to something called as crude, C-R-U-D. It is an abbreviation for creating, reading, updating, and deleting the information. So here, if you see this get, post, and put methods, which are related to the HTTP, do also follow these crude operations. So basically, get method is to retrieve the document that is available on the server to the client. So it is basically correlating to the crude operation of read. Then uh, we have a post method. So basically the post is something like you are going to put something. Of course, there is a difference between the put and the post. I'll come back to the difference in a short while, but let us understand what is a post, post method is doing. This method used to send a document to a server. It means if the server document is not available on the server, it is going to create a document. That's why you are posting the information. The client is posting the information to the server. It means some information is getting created on the server. So basically the creation of information in the web technologies or the web de development technology, we usually mention it as post operation. Something is getting posted on the server. So that's basically this post method is correlating to the crude operation of create. Then coming to the third method is basically a put method. Uh, basically, this put method is to either, either update or replace the existing information on the server. So this put method is also correlating to the crude operation of update. Then we have a delete method. This delete method deletes the specified resource or a web document which is available on the server. Usually, this uh, uh, delete operations are very uh, minimal in the web applications so that uh, the user cannot delete the existing information or which is present on the server. So these four basic methods are very much uh, useful for us in our developing the web applications as well as the web development process is concerned. So every one of you, please try to get into the uh, awareness about and uh, knowledge and uh, skill on how to use these methods in a more practical way that will help you to uh, improve your web development skills. So coming to a demo, let us see a demo how this HTTP protocol is going to be useful in our exchange of web documents across the client and the server systems. So let me open a browser. So this is a Google Chrome browser. So here, before we start initiating some operations or we try to enter some commands, let us uh, open in another 
small window usually you can see at the right side you get the more options then please go to more tools and under the more tools menu item you can get to developer tools so every web developer or a beginner should be very much acquainted in practice or very much knowledge and the skills are required in knowing this developer tools very very much and for uh, the development of the web processing so once you open this developer tools you can see there are some menu there is a menu called elements console sources and network and performance and you have some other menu options too with uh, indicating the memory application security so these are all related to the performance issues of the web pages but for you to understand at this moment uh, you can just click the network tab or the network menu item just click over there and now you come back to the web browser web browser's url and let us now give a web address uhyd.ac.in so i think everybody is aware of this particular url uhyd.ac.in of course this is related to our university website so now you see what exactly what is happening here so once i press enter so you can see on the right side a developer tools window under the network tab you can see so what exactly is happening over here so on the left side the web, web browser has now retrieved the information which is present on the uhvd.ac.in server but something something has been rendered something has been given here so if you closely observe what exactly happened here is so if you see the first instruction when i given so basically it is giving the information http colon forward slash forward slash uhvd.ac.in but remember i have just entered only the domain name with uhvd.ac.in but i have not given the http protocol so by default even if you don't give uh, the protocol name the default protocol which is been considered here is the http protocol so http protocol is added to this url and the request has been come to the server and if you see now the status so the first command basically this is 301 the status shows some number let us see what is that number is all about followed by what is the protocol you have seen so if suppose you can the protocol that we have been seeing here is http 1.1 version what is this document so this is a document is basically related to your web document who is the initiator some user username is not mentioned that's why it has been showing as other and what is the size and so on and so forth so here if anybody is not able to get these parameters on the screen you can as well click on that particular request and go to the menu bar and try to right click it and you can open the yes you will get these options here so if it also you cannot get the protocol you can click the protocol option and like this you can enable the protocol you can get the other parameters information to here so this is basically uh, just to you show you that something has been happening over here so here let us discuss what all this so total number of requests 410 requests uh, but to remember that we have requested only uhod.ac.in so but this shows around 446 and still some requests are in progress so it means you have given only a one command or one instruction but there are several other instructions have been requested from the client to the server and the server is responding those things with giving some statuses and the protocol that has been used and the type of the file whether it is a jpeg file whether it is a html file whether it is any scripting file the initiator sizes and so on and so forth so this is just to get some idea about what http is doing so the left side is on the uh, request which is made from my browser and the browser is getting the responses from the server and those responses you can see it on your browser by going to the developer tools let us come back to this uh, developer tools in a short while before we go 
Let us now continue with our discussions here. I'll get back to the slides. So now the screen sharing, I'm coming back to my PowerPoint representation. Yes. So let us go with the So once we have seen a small demo about the request that is made from the client to the server with the help of HTTP protocol. So let us understand more closely about what is this HTTP is all about. So the HTTP, that's what you have seen, the request header. The request header is coming from the client side. So basically the client said, in the example, I have not given the username and authorization was not done. Basically, you can also give the authorized users if there is some authorization it is very much required on the server so the request headers from the client side contains something like the host name name of the server where the document is stored you are giving there is a domain name that's host corresponds to the domain here allow to perform some access control when it, the document was modified who is the uh, user agent the browser is indicates the browser use the client to get the information so these are all the informations which are present on the header information of the http request so now once you get the responses from the servers so this basically the server is giving you the responses and usually the first response you get it basically is the status code so usually you get the status code uh, with the version number of http you have seen it in the example that is http 1.1 that is the 1.1 is the version number of http it has responded followed by the code so if you see the first co code what you have seen is the 302 and followed by the sum of the comments which you can see so what does 302 indicates so 302 which is all it is all these are the uh, status codes which are being defined by the internet engineering task forces so this is a rule you need to understand here usually any code that starts with three is, is nothing but it is a redirection since I have given uhod.ac.in, which is basically uh, an HTTP, so that HTTP is being redirected to HTTPS, a secured protocol. So basically, all the websites are nowadays are secured. So you have to incorporate security features onto your servers. So that's why even if you give an unsecured way of requesting, it is being redirected to the HTTPS. That's why you have seen a code of 302. But there are other codes also. If suppose you get a code number it's starting with one it means that for information that has been unused that particular web resource or web page so anything that starts with two that is 200 usually you see that's what you're seeing there 200 is a success that requested web resource is available on the server and that is the response you get it with the along with the http uh, protocol version number so with the four status code with starting with the four it is basically a client side error it means that there is some syntax error which is coming from the client side and which is unreachable and which is not unauthorized or something like this which indicates four and any status code with five which indicates that the server side error it is related to it means there is no method or any that has been implemented on the server or that uh, web page itself is not there or something which is an internal error which has happened on the server usually everybody should be aware of these particular codes which are very much useful to understand what exactly happened when you have requested some information from the client to the server let us see again come back to the demo with certain other status codes you can see here so Once again, I'm coming back to the browser. So then a browser, please make sure once again, you can repeat the same step, go to more tools, and under the more tools, you have something called developer tools. So the developer tools, please just keep monitoring the network tab. So always, it is a good habit 
for a beginner to look and understand what exactly happening on the transfer of data between the client and server with the help of these developer tools. So here I'm again once again giving the same URL uhod.ac.in. So this is what you can see uhod.ac.in. So the first instruction is basically an HTTP instruction, then it is changed to HTTPS. That's what you can see here now. So here we have the HTTPS instruction with 200 status codes, which implies that so and so information has been retrieved. And you can see those images. Now you come back to when you click on the particular any of those requests, you can see the request your the request URL is this. And what is the method that is you can ask from the client that is the get method, and what is the response that you get it from the Server at present, this because it is available on my cache, you get the response code as from this cache and the IP address of the particular server will along with the other set of information. So you can see there's so many requests, around 200 requests. You can see what are all these things. We can preview them, these images. We can try to understand what exactly those requests have been made here for this particular website what are the images you can see what are all these image names are there who posted it who has been monitoring these things and who is being scared doing all these things you can easily understand on this web developer so everyone should please try to understand and here also one interesting things you can understand here which shows that your requests have been processed in terms of milliseconds so very fast your entire request all these 300 and 400 requests have been process in so and so little time and you can get the responses which you can see it on your web browser let us again come back to the slides please coming back to the slides to understand about the http yeah so so this is what you can see that the HTTP response headers you have seen just now. The header contains the date in which the document has been uh, been updated or been processed, and the server, the web server which is present on that uh, machine, which is running that and trying to serve your request. And what is that content is about? Whether it is a MIME content, is a multimedia data. Of course, you have pictures, audios, videos, and everything, and which is related to this. So now let us understand the uh, different versions of HTTP. So I start with uh, HTTP 1.1. So basically the HTTP 1 version is to, of course, to transmit the uh, web documents from your uh, uh, requested from your client to the server and the server response to that one. So you basically you transfer this exchange of uh, transfer the data or the exchange of data between client and the server is happening in terms of a single document. So a single request is being served at a time. So this is basically runs on your uh, TCP connection. Of course, this particular HTTP one is very much overhead. That is the older versions. So, but there is a, a, a compared to HTTP one, the later version HTTP 1.1 is a single persistent TCP connection. It means once the connection has been established, you can have several requests of data exchanges between the client and the server. So this is what uh, you can understand here. The TCP connections is going to be used for several requests and the corresponding responses can be easily maintained. So you'll have only one request and your one uh, disconnection, but as far as 1.1 is concerned. So this is how your 1.1 persistent connection uh, establishment and disconnection happens. A request comes from the client, that request has been uh, indicated in the server and the server gives the response and the client gets the confirmation. So once the client gets the confirmation, a data request is been initiated requesting for uh, so and so HTML page for getting that uh, using the protocol HTTP 1.1. So then again, that requested data is going to be indicated at the server and the server gives the response of yes, the requested data is available and he's going to give a response with HTTP 1.1 saying that 200 indicates that it is successful, that is the requested information available on the server. 
and that's what it says okay and this particular request see this is how the timeout timeout indicates this particular connection establishment should be keep alive for that particular time period that's why it is still the connection has been still made use of to get one more request that the second time the request is related to an image that is coming from a request coming from the client and that indication is comes from that server that yes that is available and still the connection is been still keeping keep alive for another request that may be initiated from the client once all the requests are completed then a disconnect request comes from the client's side and that disconnect request is then served with a uh, confirmation that is given to your client so this particular set of steps if you are not understood what is the difference between http1 and and 1.1 let us understand with a small example here so once if you are using http1.0 the older version once the connection is been requested from the client comes to the server server gets the indication and server gives a response yes the request can be serviced and once you get the confirmation the actual data request is been initiated from the client so now the data is been sent from the uh, client to the server using http 1.0 the data is basically something like hello so once the hello has been received the data which is been indicated the server the server gives the response yes hello client and the data is been confirmed from the client now once this particular hello client response is been received from the server now the client gets disconnected so there is only one request can be served at a time so there cannot be multiple requests here so every time some multiple requests are to be served then every time the connection establishment has to be happening so this is what the drawback of http 1.0 so what is exactly happened in the http 1.1 which is an improvement over http 1.0 once the connection has been requested and the connection has been established between the client and the server then the data request transfer takes place now the data request from the client is hello which is indicated the server and the data response from the server to the client giving that hello client and one more request can also be done with the same connection establishment once all the requests are been served then the disconnect request will be instated from the client so this is a major difference between the http 1.0 and 1.1 so this is a, a end of the basic introduction to http so thank you